praise the Lord. I gotta catch my breath. I want to thank the Lord today. These were these songs are talking about His goodness and the things that He does for us to bless us because we live for Him. And uh, make a long story short, or I'll try to. I just need to thank Him. Um, we had a couple things go on this week. One, I thought I didn't get the job that I wanted, and I was all upset. Lo and behold, about an hour, two hours later, I found out, oh, no, 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 wait, you got the job. <laughs> so, you know, he worked that out. And then also this week, we found out, you know, we're supposed to be closing on our house tomorrow, and we found out there was a little kink in things. And so we're like, okay, all right, Lord, you got to take care of this. And we're doing it for sale by owner. And the other gal, she was kind of upset. And my husband told her, we're going to join you together in prayer. It's amazing when you can have that type of conversation with somebody you've never even met. They're in Utah. We're here. But she agreed. She goes, I appreciate that. We'll be in prayer. And I know just like the Lord worked out the job, the Lord's going to work out the house. And I just thank him for his goodness. With all of my heart, with all of my heart, I will praise you, Lord, with all of my heart, with all of my
NYC registration is still open. Uh, that is $45 per person. And uh, you can register at apostoliccrusaders.org. Uh, also coming up in, I believe, less than two weeks, <laughs> uh, or about two weeks, is a district conference, a fall conference in Hastings. That is quickly approaching. Um, we have a, uh, on here, uh, we'd like to thank everybody who helped with the garage sale, specifically uh, Sister Cheryl and uh, Jerry, who helped out with it yesterday. It was a, it was a success. So. And then uh, tomorrow is Sister Jen's birthday. Oh, come on, those are the best pictures you could get. <laughs> All right, let's sing happy birthday to her. Uh, happy birthday. It's so good to have our visitors with us today. It's so good to have uh, Brother Fred. It's so good to have your brother with us. Uh, brother, would you come up and just uh, greet, greet the congregation, say a, say a word maybe? Praise the Lord, church. I'm happy to be here with you all again. And um, I thank God to allow me to be in the house of God and see what God, God has for us. Amen. I'm happy to be with my family, helping my brother for just a week since um, he's kind of handicapped right now. <laughs> but, um, so I'm, I'm just glad to be here and uh, receive greetings from my family from Mesa, Arizona, from Redeemer. And let's, let's just worship God together. Thank you for having us. God bless you. All right, let's go ahead and stand, and we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and offering. Go ahead and read our offering declaration together. 
As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We are blessed, and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you again for all of your blessings. We just ask right now that you would bless this offering, Lord, bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
received a special unspoken request from Sister Cheryl. Um, it's so good to have a God who answers prayer. Um, <clears throat> I know she's already announced it, but this was also turned in as a, it was an answered prayer, Sister Melissa, getting that job. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's so good to know that God answers prayer. Does anybody else have a prayer request? Uh, yes, Sister Melissa. Meredith, oh, yes, uh, let's remember Meredith Laney. Oh, okay, yep. Sister Jen. Uh, yes, let's remember uh, Sister Jen's uncle Ed. He has COVID again. All right, let's take these requests before the Lord. If you'd like prayer for yourself, um, please come forward and we'll have Pastor anoint you and pray over you. Jesus, thank you again for all of your wonderful blessings, Lord. We thank you for being the God who answers prayer, and we thank you for what you have done. Lord Jesus, we bring these requests before you now. You've heard every request. You know every need, and we just ask that you would reach down, Lord. Touch these needs, move in these situations, Lord. For this special unspoken, Lord, you know the... <clears throat> Lord, you know the situation. We just ask that you would reach down and work in that, Lord Jesus. For Meredith, we ask that you touch her right now. She's in need of a healing touch, Lord. You are the great physician, and we know that you can heal her, Lord. Jesus, for and for uh, Diana, Lord, we ask that you'd keep her safe. Keep your hand upon her as she's traveling for this, Lord. Jesus. Lord, for, uh, for Ed, Lord, we ask that you touch him, Lord. Give him a healing right now, Lord. You, you worked a miracle the last time he had COVID, and we just ask that you would uh, work in his body again, Lord. Jesus, and for those who've come forward, Lord, you know the needs. We just ask that you would work in them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for hearing our needs, and we thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, all the kids who are going back to school this year, please come forward, um, and we're going to gather around and pray for those children. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's public school, homeschooled, everybody who's going back to school, please come forward.
ahead and uh, dismiss our Sunday school class. We ask that the children please walk to the basement and pastors coming with the Sunday message. One more time, I just feel the presence of the Lord in the house. Would you just lift your hands, lift your voice, give the Lord some praise in the house. Oh, oh he's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 23 and, and 24. Amen. You there? Brother Joel, I got a little echo going on up here if you'll help me out there. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. I've used this scripture oh, a few months ago on a subject but we're going to go a little different direction with this uh, scripture uh, let's let's bow our heads and and pray dear lord god we thank you again lord for your goodness and your mercy lord we thank you for your presence that we feel in this place holy ghost we ask you just to fill this house hallelujah lord touch some lives God, just uplift them, encourage them, Lord, today I pray in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I would like to speak this morning on the subject, one out of 25. One out of 25. This is one of the, the strangest texts in all the Bible. It's the Old Covenant. It's the Old Testament. Thank God we're under a, a new and a, a better covenant of mercy and grace. Amen? But there has got to be a lesson in it. There's got to be something that, that there that speaks a, a principle to this day and this time which we live in. Amen. And I, I want to, and you notice in the scripture how it said she bears and not he bears. We know that she bears are meaner, right? That's probably why. I, I want to uh, share with you quickly a story. And there, there's a book that is entitled No Room for Bears. No Room for Bears. And it was written by a, I'm told, a, a veteran forest ranger who was stationed and lived on a island in South Alaska, on the southern Alaskan coast. That, I am told, is the most grizzly bear populated island in the world. Trophy size, monster massive brown grizzly bears. And he tells the lessons that he learned in, in scientific studies that he conducted and things that that he learned and and he is almost like the the, the go-to person for anybody that's studying bears because he learned so much and he he talks about how Lewis and Clark and anybody remember in history Lewis and Clark and I'm told my my uh, uh, relations go back to the Clark side of things my my grandma's maiden name was Clark, and we can trace 
uh, family back to, to them. But he talks about in his book how Lewis and Clark were commissioned by, by then President uh, Thomas Jefferson, the president at that time, and to, to forge a, a trail from the Mississippi all the way to the West Coast. You can imagine no cities, nothing was out there but, but barren wilderness, wild animals and such. How many would like to go on a mission like that? Nobody. Well, there's Scott. I, I figured he would. Uh, so they started out on this journey discovering what would be state after state forging this trail, and they, they were to map their, their way uh, and, and map it out and report back to uh, the president. They, they had encountered something on the way that they had never seen. They had seen bears on their side of the Mississippi, black bears, but they're nowhere near the size, even a, a large bear is nowhere near the size of massive grizzly bears. And they were astonished when they saw it. And, and, and one of them actually attacked their, their party. And they actually had to hide. And, and there's like a famous painting or a picture of this encounter. People were amazed. They, they, they didn't have media back then like we have today. So when they would see it, they, they could not believe such a bear even existed. And wouldn't have believed it if, if they hadn't seen the big skin. And, and the covering of that, that bear. They said that it attacked them, and they, they, they shot this bear nine times. You know, there's a, there's a joke about, um, I, I don't even remember how it goes, but if a bear's chasing you, you know, the only thing you have to worry about is to be faster than the other person that's with you. Uh, but they shot this this bear nine times with their rifle and they were some of the best marksmen in in their time in the world and they 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 still couldn't stop it with their guns one of the men who was firing his weapon that day at at the massive bear that was charging them was a a man uh, by the name of francis juilliard juilliard and he's known as one of the best one of the best marksmen ever to live in his time. Can you imagine how much better with a rifle that they would be than most of us here in, in this room? Uh, me for sure. Uh, perhaps because they, they lived with it on a, a, uh, in their hand on a day-to-day -day basis. Their, their life depended on it. There was no grocery stores. They, they, they uh, had there was nothing. They had to live off the land. They had to hunt, and they had to uh, stay alive and, and provide. And in reading some of the history, kind of interesting, they ate pretty good. This group of, of the party ate up to nine pounds of meat per day. They killed deer and elk and, and, and bear and, and, and uh, divided it, averaged it, Averaged up to nine pounds of meat per day. A lot of protein. They probably needed it. So they become extremely accurate with guns. And these guys were the best marksmen in the world. And they shot that big bear nine times. And the amazing thing is that the, the grizzly still had the strength to come after them. And to chase three of them over a cliff. I don't know about you, but I'm jumping into the river that was below. That's what they did. Into, they jumped into a raging river, and thankfully they got them out, but they almost lost their lives. They couldn't kill it even though they shot nine times. The bullets were on target, but that's how powerful a strong grizzly bear is. And the thing about a grizzly bear, I'm told, the book goes on to say, is that the heart of that bear beats only, the four, beats only 14 to 16 times a minute. Think about that. Which means a grizzly bear, if you shoot it right in the heart, it's, it, still its heart is so slow that it has plenty of time. Plenty of time to come over and take your head off. 
and rip your chest open and, and then die. And I'm told there's no feeling like it when you, you hear the chomping of the jaws of a, this massive bear. Uh, or, or you see one and you realize that they can be up that tree in seconds. They're, they're not as good climbers as a, a brown bear, I'm, I'm told, but they can climb. And they can get up to the tree. This head forest ranger tells an amazing story off this island where he lived. And approximately 1,600 grizzly bears lived on this small island. Stay with me. We're going someplace. There's nowhere you can go and escape them. And there was a ranger who was bringing another trainee and a, a, a man a training to be a ranger. And they had received that there was a, uh, they received a report that there was a bear that was sus sus suspected of taking somebody's life. And he said they came to an area around a, a creek where 15 bears were hanging out. And when they got in the area and got situated, he said as soon as they got in the area, quote, there was a creepy feeling that came over them. And one of them whispered, the experienced ranger whispered, he is close by. He is close by. The young man training in the forest looked, and sure enough, 20 yards away, all that he could see was the red eyes through the bushes and the yellow teeth as the lips of that bear was just snarled up. Suddenly that bear attacked, and... And, and the ranger got off one shot, one shot, one shot. He hit it, but it wasn't enough to stop it. And that bear covered 20 yards in a minute and a half and tore into that ranger while that trainee went and jumped over a ravine, down a cliff, and up a tree. And he heard screams of the man who was supposed to be training him ripping uh, ripped to pieces by this bear finally the bear left long enough for the trainee to get help in but the ranger of course was dead and he had to watch the man who was supposed to train him from the the, the vantage point of that tree he said that he could see the the bear actually just just devastating this ranger and, and killing it and interesting enough the man said that he went back a brave soul one year later to this area because he was afraid that same bear would would kill somebody else he knew that the ranger had shot it one time so he he felt that if if it wasn't dead on its own he would come back and he would kill someone so he decided to hunt it he said as soon as he got back to that area, he, he made something that he could get up in a tree, and he got situated. He went up to say that he had that same creepy feeling, same creepy feeling. And sure enough, here comes the bear, popping his teeth like bears do when they're mad and when they're angry, popping his teeth, and it looked just like the one that he had, he had seen a year ago. He got his rifle ready, and he put his shell in, and, and he said when he loaded the bullet, something in the click of that gun alerted that bear, and that bear flipped around and turned immediately, began to charge. And he knew that he had one shot, and he shot it, and he severed the spine of, of this bear. The bear fell flat and died. And this man then examined the bear and saw that there was actually a scar uh, where the other ranger who had that same bear had killed, had shot him. And somehow, this was the same bear, and he had survived that wound a year prior. He goes on to tell in the book what he learned that is really what caught my attention this morning. And I want you to get the lesson, the principle of, of it this morning. After studying bears year after year, 
decade after decade after living on an island with 1,600 grizzly bears for years and years and years. He studied and named and tracked and researched these bears extensively. Scott's got a big smile on his face. I think he'd like to be there someday. <laughs> and he concluded that one out of 25, one out of 25 bears, grizzly bears, had something in its makeup, something in its personality, something in its temperament. All of them can kill you. All of them, if they're in the right setting at the right time, uh, maybe you get between uh, them and a cub or uh, you surprise them or whatever. But most bears, even grizzly bears, are not necessarily looking to attack somebody. That's what this book, this researcher has stated. He concluded that only one out of 25 is what he called an angry killer bear, meaning only uh, one, one grizzly bear uh, out of every uh, 25 will actually hunt you, and if they know that you're in those woods, they will stalk you, and they will try to kill you. The problem is you never know which bear it is. They do not wear football jerseys with a number that says, I'm number 25. I'm the one that will kill you. I'm the one if you get in my turf, if you get in my territory and you encounter me, it's not going to be a good day. I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to rip you to pieces. I'm going to tear you from limb to limb. But this writer in the book was convinced that there is a 25th bear. And you can come across number one. You can come across number three. You can come across number five, number seven. And you can say, hey, bear. And they say that's what you're supposed to do if you ever get in a situation. Uh, you're, 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 and you have a close encounter and, uh, and you're on the trail and you don't have a gun. Uh, you shout, hey, bear, real loud. And, and you try to look as big as you can and, and, and raise your hand. Okay, let's do, this is an interactive active message today I want you all to stand up on your feet and let's do a little bear training exercise in the house you ready okay um, I want you to shout real loud with me in a second raise your hands I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a count up you can go ahead and keep your hands up and I want you to shout really loud and you can Jump up. I, I want to I see some interactive here. And I want you to shout really loud, hey, bear, on the count of, of three and wave your hands. Okay? Ready? Everybody ready? Come on. I want, I want to see some interaction here. One, two, three. Hey, bear. Oh, you all look so silly. <laughs> Did you get them on camera, by the way? That was, that was good. Let's do it one more time. One more time. One, two, three. Oh, you guys are good. Thank you. You may be seated. But if it's the 25th bear, number one may take off. Bear number three may take off. Bear number seven may take off and run, and, and he's just as surprised and scared as you are. To see you, and he's not looking for trouble. He just wants you to go and do your thing, and he'll go do his thing. He'll go get a fish or something. But there's one bear out of 25, this book, this researcher has concluded, that if you encounter him and say, Hey, bear! He's going to look back and say, Hey, human! 
and he's going to be ready for the challenge. Challenge accepted. <laughs> the scientific name for this bear, it's a Latin name, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. Eurysis arctosis horvella. I don't know the first two words, but I have an interpretation for the third word, the last word, horribilla. That's a horrible bear. I know what he's trying to say. Horbella means that's a big, brown, horrific bear that's going to tear you to pieces. He's mean, he's mad, he's got claws, he's got teeth, and if you encounter him, you are in trouble. That's what that means. Well, preacher, why did I come to church this morning to hear bear stories? I couldn't help but think as I heard this information, that's kind of how sin is. I said, that's kind of how sin is. That's kind of how the enemy sets us up. That you try it, oh, nothing happens. Look at that. You get around it and you think, oh, no problem. Look at this. It runs off. You know that you're in dangerous territory, but you get more and more familiar with it, and you're used to seeing it. And it's not doing any damage. And the more you go there, the more that that you get into the situation, the more you get relaxed with it, and the easier you feel, hey, I can handle this. This is no problem. Even though it's 100 pounds, excuse me, even though it's 1,000 a, a pounds of, of, of teeth and claws and danger, uh, danger, 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 the more that you do it, the more you play with it, the more you entertain it, the more you are entertained by sin, the less you lose your defense. And you may make it by once. You may make it by twice. You may make it by five times, seven times. But if you keep on playing with the bear called sin, come on, somebody. I said, if you keep on playing with the bear called sin, one of these days, you're going to come across the 25th bear, and it's going to tear you up. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you have to decide early. Come on, somebody. There are some places that I just can't go. There are some things that I just won't do. I am drawing the line. I'm not going to cross over there and get eaten up by the 25th bear. Hallelujah. I may have a, uh, a good time uh, for a season, may get by with it, but I promise you there is a 25th angry bear out there called sin. If the Bible says, watch out, if the Bible says, be careful, stay away, thou shalt not, and you keep going like it's the bear, your friend, you know. And, and there's only a matter of time before the 25th bear shows up called sin. And it will devastate your life. It will tear you to pieces. You are not an exception. I am not an exception. If a preacher does it, a, pe a preacher will get ripped to pieces. If a husband or a wife does it, they'll get ripped. It's only a matter of time. Numbers chapter 32 on the screen, verse 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. I promise you, your sin will find you out if you're trying to hide sin in your life and if that bear ever has 25 on it you're in trouble you're in trouble there are some places that you just can't go is there a witness in the house I said there's some places that you just can't go 
There's some people that you just can't miss with. Come on, somebody. There's people that you can't hang around with. You can love them. You can pray for them. But you don't need them in your inner circle. Come on. Because if you hang around them, your friends are a, a photograph of your future. And if you keep going to the wrong places, and if you keep on flirting with the wrong people, and, and there are some things that you can't touch, I know that it's an evil, angry bear called sin. Maybe some of you this morning came to hear a sweet little pick-me-up sermon today, but I'm here to preach to you this morning. I said, I'm here to preach to somebody this morning. Hallelujah, because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for a church without spot or without wrinkle. Hallelujah, praise God, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Somebody shout, be holy. Somebody shout, be holy. One more time, somebody shout, be holy. Jesus is coming soon. You could just take a look at our world and see the garbage. And I'm here to encourage somebody, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm tired of seeing young people torn to pieces by alcohol and drug addiction. I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of, of, of seeing the enemy uh, destroy uh, and deceive Church people, yes. Uh, I'm tired of uh, 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 people that can't make a decision to live for God. I, I'm tired with uh, uh, people that have one foot in the church and the other foot in the world. And you can't make it to heaven straddling the fence. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back soon, church. Is there anyone in the house this morning that wants to make heaven your home? Come on. Stand to your feet, and I want you to give a shout and praise to him if you want heaven your home this morning. Come on. Give him a shout and praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Help us be ready, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. For another 30 seconds, let's take a praise break in the house. Take a praise break in the house. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, that sounds good out there. Come on, continue some more. Continue some more in the house. Yes, glory to God. I want to be ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sin is not your friend. I'm going to say that again. Sin is not your friend. Drugs is not your friend. Alcohol is not your friend. It's only a matter of time before that 25th bear if you continue in sin. Thank you. You may be seated for a moment. If you continue in sin, you never know when that 25th bear is coming to rip you. I'm not up here trying to take the fun out of life. No, but there comes a moment that you got to stand up and, and, and say, now wait a minute. My body is not my own. It's a temple of the Holy Ghost. I belong to God. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Do you know that you are and I are at a disadvantage in life sometimes? You know that a blind man can beat you up anytime he wants to? All he has to do is shut the lights off. And if the devil can get you to come on his turf, the Bible says that he is a prince of darkness. He wants to turn your light off. And he'll turn your light off on you if you'll let him. And he'll say, well, you know what? I'm glad that you know the name. 
I, I'm glad that you know about the blood. I'm glad that you, you know the word. But you're on my turf. You volunteered for this. You crossed the line. And I got a 25th bear that's coming for you. That's been waiting for you. Keep on coming here. Keep coming out here. But somebody shout Jesus. I said somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. What I'm preaching to you today is we better not lose this conviction. We better not lose holiness and get so friendly with sin and the wrong people and the wrong places and touching the wrong stuff. I wish there was a witness in the house. I have watched beautiful families through the years open the door to sin and it didn't happen overnight. You experiment, you do this, you do that, no things happen. You cross another line, nothing happens. You're going to cross another line, it's still okay. And here comes a 25th bear. He'll come in and he'll tear marriages up to pieces. He'll tear children apart from parents and rip them to pieces. The Bible says in, in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to, de, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If the enemy is, 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 is enticing you, saying, come on out here into my forest. Come on. He's not doing it so that you can have a good time. I said, he's not doing it so you can have a good time. He has an attack on his mind. And what happens to people is what happens to Samson. How many remember the story of Samson? Anybody? Story of Samson. Samson was uh, anointed. Samson was called. Samson had a, a purpose. Samson was a deliverer. Samson was powerful. But he kept laying his head in Delilah's lap. Wrong person. Wrong place. Wrong thing. And every time he would do it, he got a little bit more comfortable with doing it. Every time, he got more comfortable, got easier. And she would say, oh, sweetheart, tell me your secret. And she'd run her hair through, her hand rather, through his, his hair. Tell me your sec secret, Samson. Tell me your secret. And at first, he, he thought that probably lightning bolts were going to, to hit him. Isn't that how we are when we're, we're, we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing? We just, oh, a lightning bolt should have hit me. At first he thought, oh, judgment's coming. But when nothing happened, we think that God's saying, oh, it's no big deal. Keep on doing it. See, nothing's happening. But sin is not your friend. I'm going to say that again. Sin is not your friend. Sin will thrill, and then it will kill. Sin will fascinate, and then it will assassinate. There's pleasure in sin for a season. And then the 25th bear shows up and tears into you and what was beautiful and what was fun and and what was I'm just having a good time it starts tearing and ripping and ripping the pieces 
emotions and the ability to, to cope and, and to deal with the sin in, in life, in your life. And what I'm saying to you this morning is very clear and very simple. Don't we need some convictions? Don't we need some convictions in our life still? Don't we still need to walk in holiness? Don't we still need some standards? Come on, we need to be set apart from the world. We can't just act like the world. I know that he's your savior, but he needs to be your Lord, and he needs to be first in our lives. We need Jesus. I said we need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Because he said, I'll, I'll, I'll give you life. And this world just wants to suck life out of you. But Jesus says he wants to give life and life abundantly. I don't know about you, but I want life and I want it more abundantly. Hallelujah. In closing, I guess what I'm preaching this morning is I'm preaching to a people a day that if you're dealing with a bear in your life and a lot of people is in one way or another dealing with bears in their life dealing with a bear that has the, the potential just to, to drag you down and tear you up you can bring it to the altar this morning I said you can bring it to the altar this morning you can find forgiveness at the altar. Praise God. You can find deliverance at this altar. You can find strength at this altar. You can find joy in the Holy Ghost at this altar. Praise God. And, and victory at this altar. If you're here this morning and you need to repent of your sins, you can do that this morning at this altar. If you're here this morning and you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life to help you from bears, you can get it today at this altar if you want it. Hallelujah. This is what one commentary said about our text. This, this, remember our text about Elisha and the 42 young people? This is what one commentary said concerning Elisha. It said that when he saw the hardened, rebellious conditions of those 42 young people, when he saw, listen to the word, the hardened, the rebellious condition, number one, and their unresponsiveness to correction, he turned them over to the Lord. If you continue to harden your heart this morning in rebellion and unresponsive spirit to correction, I'm not up here playing games this morning. I realize that we're, we're closer to the coming of the Lord than any time before in history. He could come back today. He could come back tomorrow. As far as I see it, there's no unfulfilled sign that would hold him back from coming back for his church. And the, and the number one way that I, I know this is true, as most of, most of the world don't even think about the coming of the Lord anymore. Isn't that sad? The trumpet's going to sound. I said, one day the trumpet is going to sound. Hallelujah. And there will be people that will be left behind. You better be ready when the trumpet sounds. I said, you need to be ready when the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. When people are unresponsive to correction and they lose their fear, they lose their tears. Nothing, 
touches them anymore and they lose the ear from God talking to them they don't hear from God the fact that you're here this morning and you feel something in you saying he's telling the truth that's the Holy Ghost that's in the house this morning I said that's the Holy Ghost that's in the house this morning that's piercing through the Bible said that Samson woke up one day expecting the same thing to happen that happened before that always happened but this grizzly bear was different this grizzly bear was different and when they attacked him he tried to shake them off he had no defense nothing Satan is not playing with you to entertain you I said Satan is not playing with you to entertain you he is out for destruction he's angry he is hate filled and he will do and use anything to destroy everyone that's in this house this morning but if you're dealing with a bear this morning You come to the right church at the right time for such a time as this. Jesus says, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to look behind your shoulder anymore for that, that grizzly bear that's been chasing you because it's free indeed. Just because you're, you're, you're not locked up doesn't mean you're, you're still not running. But the difference is that you're not having to look over your shoulder anymore. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. Praise God. This altar is open. I'm not here to beat anybody up this morning or make you feel bad about yourself and your issue, your struggle. I'm here to warn you with a godly fear. I want you to come and just worship the Lord this morning at this altar. Would you do that as they sing? This altar is open. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Make me in your image. Wash me white as snow. Purify this heart.
as they continue to play a song. I wonder if you could just get by somebody and put your hand on them and pray for them in closing. Find somebody appropriate. Get by them. Put your hand upon on them. Amen. And pray. Pray for them right now. Pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. Yes, yes, come on. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here. Come on. Jesus, that's who's here this morning. His name is Jesus. in the house this morning. What's his name, church? What's his name? It's Jesus. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. He's here in the house. He's here in the house this morning. Up your voice. God in heaven, the praises of his people. Lift it up and shout with the voice of triumph. Glory. That's how it's done this morning. That's how it's done this morning. When you lift him up, give him praise. That's how the battle is going to be fought with your praise and with your worship. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Jesus. It's Jesus. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Praise God. Somebody get out of your pew and just praise God for a few more minutes. Come on. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, Jesus. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name. What's his name this morning? What's his name? Yes, yes, Jesus.
Oh, let's take a praise break in the house again. Come on. Lift him up. Isn't he good? Has he done some good things in your life? Come on. Open up your mouth again and give him some praise. Glory, glory, glory.